How's it going tubers? Jim Bobway here with a look at the Jazzwares Halo Infinite World of Halo scale Banished Ghost with Elite Warlord vehicle set. This ghost looks amazing. The amount of detail in the paint job, the mold itself is just extravagant. I mean, you got all that detail in the engines, you got the detail in the seat back there. It just looks great right off the bat, right out of the box. We're gonna get in a little closer so you can see everything better, but I cannot stress enough how well the paint job is on this vehicle. So starting off at the front, we have a very mean front profile. Like look at the way these wings dip down and point. The guns themselves, you can move them up a little bit. They're a little stiff, a little tricky to move, but you can also move them down for aiming. But look at that, all the detail in there with this battering ram kind of thing going on. You got extra armor plates on the wings, all this uh, metal scraping and scratching detail added in. Just looking at the side too, you can see those guns a little better. They've got paint in there, the black with the gray. You have this point right here for all like goring people or something. It's crazy. It looks mean, it looks menacing. Uh, I'm liking the look of the Banished Ghost so far. At first, I didn't think I would like it, but I'm, it's growing on me. You know, this is my favorite uh, alien vehicle in the series is the Covenant Ghost. And I think the Banished version, you know, it's, it's unique. It, you want to make it different because it's not exactly Covenant, but it, it looks good. The, um, the top of the front canopy here, or the shell, looks good as well. Let's get in closer to that. So here you can see the uh, top of this upper shell. You got a little bit of black in there. Another big armor plate, a lot more of that metallic scratching which shows up nice, and then these little blue lights on both sides. Moving around to the back, or the side first, you have all that engine detailing in there. Back of the fins, you have uh, these, they're minimal, they don't really pose a whole lot, but they move sort of uh, probably to work with steering. The uh, engine detail back there, you have more of that uh, scratched paint going on, the pedals for the operator doesn't move but you know it's there it's an extra piece and then you have the uh, control yokes here these actually move for like throttle and turning so that is cool to see that you have in there the dials or the display for whatever you can you know imagine it'll show you how much boost you have or your guns all that stuff this retracts to make it easier to set a figure in there and you can bring it right back in that way you know their legs don't get in the way too much the seat looks nice like some kind of alien leather maybe or faux leather all that sculpting and detail in there is great molded in brown the backrest looks great you got more of that uh, scraping metal detail a few more lights on there and again another one of those little black pieces in there the undercarriage is nice as well it's not as detailed but you still have a little bit of detail under here more paint applications down here uh, some detail down there some uh, Jazzwares stuff there as well, bottoms of the, of the wings. All these um, little energy bits to help it stand up are detachable. So those just go into peg holes. You got like the peg there and you have this uh, hexagonal peg hole. So there we can get a better look at all that detailing. So if you want, you can have them off to make it look like it's a ghost that's not in use, like sitting on the ground. It's a little wobbly, uneven, but yeah, you can get a better look at the undercarriage there. Let's move on to the figure. Here is the Elite Warlord figure. He looks really nice. The paint applications are really good. He has a lot of that uh, metal scraping on his armor, just like the Ghost. He's got uh, decals on his armor, a gray uh, battle skin underneath the armor plates themselves. And first off, out of, out of the box, right off the bat, he looks good. The sculpting looks great. The articulation, though, might be a fluke on my figure, but we'll look into that to see what I think on that. So with the articulation, starting at the head, his head is on a ball joint, so we can move it around, turn it up and down, not a whole lot of movement. The base of the neck, it seems like you should be able to move it, but it doesn't. It's just a separate piece molded into there, but it, the base of the neck doesn't move. Nice helmet, large, oversized helmet for the elites. Those will always look good. Shoulders don't have a whole lot of mobility due to these shoulder shoulder pieces of armor. So it's unhinged in there, but you can't really move it that much. And then there's a swivel, so you can get a little bit of motion like that. The elbow 
is on another hinge. It can go almost straight and then about a 90 degree angle and that's it for that. You have a swivel in there too to turn the arm. The wrist has a hinge to go in and out and then it has a swivel as well and that's the same on both arms. There's very minimal waist, uh, waist articulation in here. He, it doesn't really move that much and you think there would be more but there isn't. The hips are just like the jackal of the last figure I reviewed so they have that cracking popping noise but that's how it's supposed to be it's just the plastic rubbing against plastic and they're very sturdy there with that ball joint and then you have a swivel built in as well at the base of that hip that helps with uh, mobility as well the knees the hinge on the knees is very tight but on this right knee the swivel is very very loose so far though it has not hindered him being able to stand up on his own. Both knees are the same with that hinge, but this one, oh this one is also a little loose but not as much. Then you have a hinge on the ankle as well, to bend it up almost straight. That's a little tougher to move and you have a swivel there as well. The foot has a very little amount of articulation, almost none. It's probably due to these uh, guard pieces on his armor. but there is a little bit of movement there. So that's the articulation. Probably my figure specifically has that problem with the swivel on the knee. And that's kind of a big problem. It's very loose, but it doesn't stop him from being able to stand on his own. And I think that's the important thing. He comes with this energy sword, which has a nice amount of detailing. It's a clear, light blue plastic, rubbery plastic, so it's malleable, though it, is, it does come bent in the box sometimes silver print for the handle and you can see that electricity kind of painted on there that looks really nice. You have these two extra supports molded in because this would be really thin on its own so that keeps it strong and durable and we'll see how that looks in his hand. Getting this sword in his hand was not as tricky as I thought it would be. His fingers, though very thin, are also very rubbery so it's easy to move those uh, two main like double index fingers out of the way to get the sword in his hand. In previous uh, series, such as McFarlane and stuff, those fingers would be really thick and really hard to move, and it would be extremely difficult to get guns into their hands. So it's nice to see that difference with that very thin, moldable plastic, almost rubber, to help get that in there. And it, they hold the shape. They go back into shape. You can press them back into shape. And he holds onto it well. It's not shaking out of his hand. It's not going anywhere. It will turn a little bit, but, I mean... To be able to get it in there easy and to be able to remove the sword with just as much ease, like so. And you can see those fingers. See how moldable those are. You can pull them up to get them out of the way and then they fold back into position. You can squish them down and they work well. And they look the part too. They look like an elite's hand, which is nice to see. So let's get this elite warlord on the ghost itself. First, we're going to retract that back seat. We're going to get his arms out, probably turn his hands a little bit. I don't know how much, how far forward you got to sit him. Try and get him comfortable in there, move those legs forward a bit, and put his hands on the yokes. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Probably put one hand on each get him in some kind of sitting position like that, get his head up over that canopy. Uh, probably might need to bend those knees a bit more, I don't know if you can. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little more difficult than I thought, I guess maybe you choose the position, there we go. So it's, you know, that adjustableness to help him get in there better, stay on. He'll move a little bit, there might be a better way to get him on there, we're going to try that out in a minute, but right now he looks pretty good. He's got that uh, clearance up above to look over the canopy, and he sits in there well. There's a better look at him in that uh, little cockpit area. He He's up off the seat a little bit, but he he's in there well. I got both hands on the little steering yokes, and you can even see his head over the top, and it looks pretty good. So far, uh, I'm really liking this uh, little vehicle set. For $20, you get this really big ghost, which... Let's get a ruler out and see the exact size of this sucker. It is, when fully contracted, 
a little over nine inches long with those guns. You extend that out all the way and it becomes about ten and a half. So that's really nice. You got the height with it standing up on the little energy stilts, whatever you want to call those, is about four and a half inches tall. And it's it's big. It's 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 a nice big chunk of plastic for twenty dollars, including what would be a ten dollar standalone figure. So that means this is basically ten dollars itself. Is really nice. You know, they they do a mongoose in at the same price range with a Master Chief figure. So that's cool. You can have both two medium small uh, opposite sides vehicles. They also do a warthog for thirty dollars, which is even bigger than this which I'd love to get my hands on, that would be really cool. So overall, this uh, I think this vehicle set is nice. The figure, the detail on the figure is really good. The um, posability is a little lacking, especially in those really uh, wobbly, uh, weak joints, which might just be my specific figure. The Ghost itself is well detailed. Um, it looks great, it feels durable and strong and sturdy. And it, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, maybe doing a different paint job on this you know people might make it look like a covenant ghost maybe sand this stuff down or just all the different stuff you can do because the mold itself just looks nice and the paint itself right out of the box is amazing itself you don't even have to repaint it if you don't want to but I can't imagine how amazing people can make this look even more than it does now so that about covers it for my review of the Halo Infinite Jazzwares Banished Ghost and Elite Warlord figure we're going to end this off with a few snapshots.